Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art Talk Session 4. We are uh, joined today by David Leger, who is kind enough to come on and talk with us and share some of his uh, insights. Uh, David, if you want to say hi to everyone. Hey, everyone. Yep. Um, so, David, uh, just to get things started, I always like to sort of um, ask what was your sort of uh, inspiration or what, what kind of motivated you to pursue a career as a professional artist? Oh, well, I actually yeah. like to watch animation movies and skits, so that's what really uh, bring my passion on this industry. So, yeah, most probably it's because of Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could definitely tell that your style was like heavily influenced by like Disney and Pixar and stuff. Yeah. Was there any uh, particular film that was like the uh, like the the big one that was like, oh, I, I got to do this after after seeing it." <laughs> um, <laughs> um, not really. I like everything equally, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't have like any like any particular favorite that like really set it off. Um, maybe it's Little Mermaid. I like mermaid. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one for me too. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> classic. Yeah, it looks good. I think it's mermaid. So, uh, David, did you go to art school, or do, are, are you primarily self-taught, or? Um. Yeah, I went to. Art school actually. I went with animation major in Lemkok University. It's in Malaysia. So I took animation major for four years. I study the fountain there, animation there, uh, 3D stuff. I mean, like, was there anything like super specific that uh, I don't know you would say uh, was like I don't know, the more helpful exercises like in art school that really made a difference to you when you were studying a lot and trying to get good? Um, yeah, internet helps me a lot. <laughs> I see a lot of <laughs> internet. <stuff. laughs> yeah, internet. I, uh, I actually can't blame you on that one. Yeah, YouTube is uh, YouTube and books are, are my go-to. So. Yeah, YouTube. I mean, nowadays, like, you know, back when, back, I can't imagine how hard it was, like, actually before the internet, because, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, back then, like, I would have never known about, like, Lumis or, like, you know, PDFs and, uh, you know, Google Google Drive and YouTube and, Jesus. Yeah. Um, thanks to I'd internet. probably still be doing, like, napkin doodles, <laughs> like, with no fundamentals. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So uh, after after art school, David, uh, like, uh, did you did you just start like doing a lot of uh, self the like, kind of self studies, or did you immediately try to kind of get into the field? Yeah, actually, I joined the local animation studio, so I learned the industry, animation industry in there, and of course, internet. I work in that studio for, for a year, and then I quit and became a freelance until now. Hmm. So, uh, with uh, with your freelance, is there any um like could you kind of like walk us through like uh, how how you landed your your first freelance opportunity? Oh yeah, um, my first freelance opportunity was um, children illustrate. Book. So it's from a local book publisher. They wanted to search an artist to draw for kids. So I'm in. I was in. <laughs> <laughs> and then my yeah, I guess and then, the Disney style like it probably was very yeah. attractive to them. I imagine. Yeah, actually, last time my portfolio was not that Disney kind of style. <laughs> <laughs> I was so sure when they searched my name as well. <laughs> uh, I actually have a pretty good question. I think a lot of people, uh, even myself, like struggled with until like more recent, more recently. Mm -hmm. so, um, when, like, I mean, during, uh, did you assemble your portfolio during 
art school or like you know was there a period where you were like self studying that you had to make a decision as to like when is the right time for you to make a portfolio and start trying to get jobs yeah actually uh, before uh, in school we have to make art portfolio but then I have to upgrade portfolio because the skill is uh, a lot of uh, the skill is different each time right I mean it's improving so I have to make portfolio each year so I like to do fun personal project so sometimes I include that in my portfolio as well so yeah that's a lot of freedom as well mm. were you were you really happy with your portfolio like when you came out of art school or like, was there like a time where you're like no I think I can do better like with these pieces or you know yeah, actually I'm not that happy with my portfolio after grad graduating from art school <laughs> but that's what I have last time. Mm. So yeah, lucky I improving after that. Well, it seems like it all like worked out. You know, you uh, I mean, you know, even if you weren't like happy with it, it's still like landing you jobs and you know got you to where you're at now. Which like you yeah. know, would you want to talk a little bit about like what you're doing now in terms of freelance? Ah uh, yeah, I'm actually. Uh, Illustration, illustrator and visual development artist, freelance. So I'm making a concept character design for a mobile games company. It's in Turkey. No, not Turkey. Uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. So I'm freelancing to that company right now. Okay. Awesome. And uh, where do you like? I don't. I don't know. Like, what are your ambitions as to like? You know, where where would you like to go with uh, freelancing? Like, are there any dream jobs or personal projects? Yes, of course. I really wanted to work in Disney, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I figured that was probably the case, but you know. Yeah, actually, I I try to apply it every year, but you know, sometimes. I failed, <laughs> so I have to improve my portfolio again. Hmm. Okay. So it's sort of like an ongoing kind of goal for you to to kind of keep pushing for that. Yeah, that's my dream job to be in Disney. So I'll I'll never give up. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I, I think you'll I think you'll eventually get it. Like you know, you're a. Uh... I think your style is very indicative of what they do, and you're also like coming up with creative like little niches for it, like the Final Fantasy characters. Like, um, for any of you that are listening, like you know, you can see like some of David's work on Kotaku as uh, his Final Fantasy characters were in the Disney style were featured on there. Yeah, those were those were phenomenal. I love those. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I wasn't expected that, so that's really cool to be in Kotaku. Did you like just do them, and then like one day you were like, uh, you know, you're on Kotaku or something, and you just like look <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it was a surprise, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, uh, personal. Um. Well, from what I understand, we were gonna do like a. I think you were saying you maybe wanted to do like a little little demo for us. So you're gonna do like some uh, some of your painting process, and we'll just talk while you're while you're painting. All right. Cool. So I'm sharing my monitor now. Okay. Uh, still can't still can't see it there. Is it live now? No, uh, it's still your icon. You should uh, like if you hit the green like screen share button, it should give you an option for like Photoshop or desktop. Uh huh. Uh, I choose entire screen, right? Then share. Yeah, um, you can either choose Photoshop or uh, desktop, and it should should work. Oh, okay. Is it on now? No. Can you see it <laughs> No, I can't. Is it on now? Still not, still not yet. See the icon. Photoshop. 
There, there we go. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we got it. <laughs> yep. All right, we're good. Oh. <laughs> so, just gonna draw the character face with our run, right? Yeah, just I don't know. We can Perfect. Talk about like what you're doing. Cool. Simple as that. So is this a uh, is this like CS3 Photoshop here? Um, it's CS4 Photoshop. CS4, yeah. Yeah. Have you just been working with that like that model for a while and you know uh, I don't know. Yeah, actually, it's been like two years. I'm using CS4 or a year and a half. I forgot. Okay. Fun. <laughs> I don't know. I've never tried Photoshop CC yet, but. It's kind of actually, but I still have my CS4 working fine, so I don't want to upgrade that. <laughs> I feel you. Once you get like comfortable, <laughs> you know, there's people that are using like CS3 still, and you know their work's amazing. So yeah, actually, it's kind of the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, I'm using uh, Wacom Bamboo. <laughs> oh wow, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of old one. It's been like five years <laughs> since my art school. <laughs> Never update. I think that's something that a lot of people, a lot of people, kind of forget is that you know they're always asking about like brushes and uh you know like what brush pack do you have, whatever you know like any specific customization or whatever you know. But it, you know it's you can do like a lot like you know you can produce quality results with just like a hard round and you know. Uh, yeah. A document. You know, the default brushes. Default brushes are fine. <laughs> I mean, some brushes are cool, you know, and you can. They, they definitely have their advantages, but you don't need them. It can be easy to use, and yeah, and it's, it's really effic efficient. Definitely. Yeah. So let's start drawing. I'm using a pencil tool. It's from Stumpy Pencil. You can download it free. <laughs> it's not mine, but it's free on the in internet. So this my character. Just a default girl cartoon face. Hey Travis, are you able to see the uh, the bigger canvas? Oh, can you see it now? Yeah, I mean, see it on Navigator, but yeah, he's he hasn't. Well, Probably have you started? Be. Have you already started drawing? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh. Did you uh, did you pick Photoshop or uh, desktop? I pick Photoshop. So that, maybe I, I think because it's uh, CS four, uh, you'll probably have to share desktop. Um, because like I know I know CS6 like that I whenever I screen share like it won't show my menu so it might be the reverse for four and it's not showing oh. us the canvas. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. I okay. Is it on? No, yeah. Oh, it's, it's loading. It's loading. I still don't see it yet. I can't see it yet. Let me try. Maybe try entire screen. How about now? Um, you see it, Travis? No, not yet. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We're experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> Wish we had like a like a commercial break or something for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there should be like a share desktop option or something in there. Should do. Yeah. Actually, this is already screen sharing. Wow. It's weird. weird. Yeah, so don't so don't see it yet. Still hmm. see it yet. Yeah, but um, 
sometimes like I remember last time like we had to like like he just dropped out and drop back in Travis and it worked like if you want to try that real quick okay cool so yeah if you just you should be, like refresh the page okay I'll yeah yeah it. just like refresh for sure yeah hopefully hopefully this works everyone <laughs> bear with us it's all a work in progress <laughs> Okay. okay. And he's back. Yep, I'm back. <laughs> All right, let's give this a whirl okay. one more time. Is it live now? Give it one second. It's got like the little screen share thing by your uh, by your I uh, like by your icon window down there, but I still mm -hmm. don't see your your little logo. It might be taking a second like to to load up. I'm not sure. Is there, let me see if there's any other options. Yeah, I guess it's just desktop or Photoshop. Yeah, it's just Photoshop. Yeah, just, I don't know, just share your Photoshop and we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll yeah. see if it works this time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to make do. Yeah. If not, if not, we can just talk, you know, it's whatever. I even choose the, the name, the canvas. Still not appearing yet. Yeah, I was sharing a second ago, but then it went back off. How about entire screen? Yeah, do it. Try, try that. Can you see my screen now? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. What's nah, wrong? That's all right. Well, David, aside from, like, I mean, you know, one thing one thing I think to ask you is, like, aside from, you know, obviously working at Disney, which is your dream job, is there any, like, uh, Not your dream like, job. are there any properties that you, like, personally would like to work on? Like, uh, you know, any, like, big properties you're a fan of besides, you know, Disney, obviously? Well, it's obviously with Phoenix Final Fantasy. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty crazy. So I imagine uh, Final Fantasy was a was a big one for you, like growing up, probably. Yeah, I, I played Final Fantasy since like eight years old, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's about like I I probably started even younger. Like my my brother would play, and I would watch when I was like six or seven, and like I was obsessed. <laughs> I started with Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> right, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I started six. with seven, but like Final Fantasy VIII ended up being my uh, my favorite. Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, that's cool. I actually was kind of like an underdog. I uh, there was a, there was a PS One game called Lunar Two that I was a huge fan of. Um, Lunar. Yeah, it was like a very very old school, like JRPG. You had like little eight bit icons and stuff running around. Mm, I think I've heard of it before. <laughs> yeah, it was a. It's kind of rare, but it's like a. I don't know. It was a fun one for sure. See, I think I saw the Photoshop screen for a second, but then it yeah, left. For a second, then it went back off. It might just be taking a minute to sync up. Like, if you just like let it sit for a second, it might maybe it'll pop up in a minute. Because they. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> you can't see my screen, like my monitor right now. Yeah, it has the it has the screen share arrow. So I don't know. Like if we let it sit for a second, maybe it'll load up. Cause I, I think there was a delay on the Photoshop one, so I don't know. Uh, I see. Yeah. Not sure. I'm really sorry about this. Oh, that's all right, man. Uh, oh, so good. <laughs> is there, like, in terms of, like, you know, studying and trying to improve your work, are there any, like, resources that you would recommend for, like, you know, people that are doing the same thing? Resources? Um, it's from the book. <laughs> Art book, actually. Um, oh. Any... any 
um, Andrew Lumis art books is awesome. Okay. And if you like cartoon style, it's uh, what's the name? Ben Ben Caldwell. The artist. The artist's name is Ben Caldwell. He has the cartoon art book thing that teach about posing in cartoon stuff. It's awesome. Oh. See, yeah, it's, I saw David's Photoshop uh, pop up again. Uh, not sure. <laughs> now? <laughs> yeah, it was up there. Kind of a... What is it? Like, it popped up and then it went away again. Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we don't got to worry about it. Yeah, it might be a lost cause. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Um, like, if you, you look see the canvas, but uh, if, you, uh, if you enlarge your navigator, like, we can see that, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a navigator. Okay, so I'll just make it larger then. Yeah. Let's see if we can make out the uh, make it out there. Okay. Can you see I'm drawing now? My, can you see yeah, that'll that? actually work. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just do that. That's right. yeah. Whatever way, whatever way has to be done. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we, we do have a demo now. <laughs> yeah, that's actually not bad. Like, uh, thank goodness for the navigator. Great feature. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's awesome, actually. Glad uh, glad that works. Uh, besides Final Fantasy, like, besides Final Fantasy, what other, like, I don't know, big influence would, would you say, like, that really affected your art? Um, like, anything, like, really specific? Um, yeah, it's from Ghibli, Ghibli Studio. Oh, yeah, like Princess Mononoke and stuff like that? Yeah, I like uh, House Moving Castle. It's okay. my drawing style as well. Hmm. Yeah, I like Studio Ghibli stuff a lot. Like, particularly like, my favorites are, you know, Princess Mononoke, and then they did the, uh, they did a video game, actually. It was called Nino Kuni. Oh, yeah, I played that game before. Really cool. Three, right? It's like a, like a crazy cross between like a JRPG and Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, but the battle system is a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it though. There weren't like I don't know with the PS3 and the 360. Like there weren't a lot of games that were like that. Yeah. yeah definitely. Okay. So uh, what are you what are you thinking like right now while you're uh. I mean, just I mean, obviously you're you got like a regular, like I don't know, maybe a chick. Or is it? A... Um, I'm not sure yet. It's a girl. Hmm. Yeah, she's got like the uh, kind of um, similar facial proportions to like Elsa or some of the other Disney kind of girls, like uh, like that. It's awesome. It's really default <laughs> girl face. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, like uh. When when you were trying to get into Disney, did you like do a lot of the uh, like drawing their their characters and stuff, and trying to figure out like uh, their like how they exaggerate their features and do their proportions? Was that like big for you? Um, yeah, I feel like that works as well. Like um, mimicking the artist that you like, but in a different way. Uh, something I actually really like about your style that you're pulling off right now is the um, it's Disney, but there's a little anime in there too. Yeah, it's I guess it's from Ghibli. <laughs> yeah, it's, honestly though, that's like a, I think that's kind of an edge that you have because like you know, that's uh, a, like not very many artists these days like are really trying to like combine like the Eastern and the Western like you know I don't know approach to art. And whereas, like, you kind of had, like, influence from both, so it's uh, kind of cool to see that come through a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you really uh, got that up quick. Like, that is, that is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could catch that fast. <laughs> Definitely. Have you tried, like, any uh, exercises, like... Um, like say doing the same character like multiple times with like several different emotions and stuff like that. Oh yeah, actually I did that for facial expression. You mean something like that? Mm -hmm. Facial expression. 
That's it. And that's something that I constantly see on like the spreadsheets for Disney is that they take a character and it's just like this full like you know just spread of emotion kind of thing. It's, it's always yeah, actually, really cool to look at. And uh, part of my job <laughs> to make facial expressions of the characters. Mm. So I'm Are done. You, uh, cleaning the uh, line work there now. And now I'm I proceed to the coloring right away. <laughs> <laughs> I usually work with uh, messy lines, but if you see my Final Fantasy fan art, it's kind of different style from the one that I wanted to make right now. So mm. This one is more about rendering. Pretty long. So I'll make something like ambient occlusion with black and white monochrome. So let's say you did, if you did get a job at Disney, like what would you, would you want to just be like a concept designer there? Would you want to like eventually work up the ladder to maybe like art director? Or? Um, yeah, I, I'll start from Adam, <laughs> become the concept artist, try to learn from the senior there. Okay, I'm done blocking. So from here, I'll just combine my sketch and the masking layer. Okay, it's actually how I do mine too. I always just go ahead and fuse my base layer and my my sketch layer and just work on it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, can you see my layer? Yeah, yeah, your uh, your layer palette is uh, is there. Yeah, uh, cool. So. Yeah, we can see everything but the main canvas. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. I don't know why. Yeah. Thank God for the navigate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's funny too because like uh, on CS6, uh, like uh, whenever if you just share Photoshop, um, the canvas shows up, but none of the like uh, windows show up, so you can't see like the layers palette or anything. So it's like the opposite, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. So I'm painting the occlusion, mostly shadow and occlusion together. I'm using a multiply brush. Uh, I'm not sure you can see this, but uh, there's a top panel. There's a when you choose brush, there's a mode you can change, and I change it to multiply. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and your, is that like a 26% opacity for this? Yes, that's it. That's the one. Awesome. So do you uh, work from like shadows and then build up to, to lights, like go from dark to light? Yes, something like that. So it's easier for me to build something solid from black and white. So I'm, I'm assuming that characters are your primary specialty. Like you, uh, do you ever like do any environment work or set assets or anything like that? Um. Yeah. Actually, in my first year of freelancing, I accept any job. <laughs> <laughs> so I like environment as well. But right now, I I just take character design. Yes. It takes a lot of time to paint environment. Yeah, that looks amazing. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, it's already got like a good three-dimensional pop to it. Very nice. Yeah, just set that up so quickly. I think it's, uh, that is yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <pretty. laughs> it's really easy to build a foundational painting in black and white. So try it. <laughs>
So you just kind of start out with like establishing your values and then go over it with color afterward? Yes, something like that. That seems like that's a pretty... Uh, well, when, when you do make the jump to color, do you uh, like, is there like a particular layer mode or something you use to, uh, to colorize everything? Or? Um, yeah, uh, I'll use Multiply for coloring max. Gotcha. For this, I'll just use normal. This one is just a painting. Okay. Yeah, like seeing this makes me have like no doubt that you will be working for Disney one day. <laughs> that you can produce <laughs> this character like, quickly. Really wish so. <laughs> That'll happen. Do you still, uh, you know, aside from like your actual work, like do you still study on the side, like trying to? I mean, we're always trying to improve. I mean, as artists and such. Like, is there anything yeah. specific that you've been doing lately? Yeah, actually, I, I'm in a online class right now. It's from Schoolism. Okay. I'm taking Nathan Oaks, um environment class. So I'm learning about environment, painting environment. I think I'm lack of environment painting lately, so <laughs> I want to learn more. Mm. And yeah, I recommend it. Recommend the, the schoolism because it's affordable and it's really uh, it's really good. Oh yeah, I've heard really good things about schoolism. Like, there's a isn't there like a bit of a wait or something to get in? Um, no, you just sign up and it's a subscription base. So you just subscribe and you'll just get the video right away. It's on like streaming. Oh, wow. It's really cheap, actually. It's really affordable. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been considering trying to jump into something like that with like a, not to kind of like plug like any competition, but like the uh, Oatly Academy. Um, Oatly Academy. Oh, I see. I've, I've heard of that, but I've never checked it, <laughs> so I'm not sure. Yeah, they have like a painting drama course or something that a lot of, uh, a few other people that I've interviewed before like recommend. They, uh... Ah, I see. So it's, I think it's nice. I like uh, Chris's works. His postcat, his postcat, uh, sorry, what? Post, postcat. Is it postcat? Postcat. Sorry, guys, my internet was kind of phasing out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was still... My Photoshop? Yeah, well, what was the last thing you heard me say? Sorry, I was. Uh... Oh, um, I said that um, I like Chris Oakley's works. I sometimes listen to his postcat. Okay. Yeah, do you ever, uh, I don't know, do you have like any other like uh, favorite artists that are like working in the industry that you, uh, I don't know, like, really like, kind of use their, their work as like, a standard that you kind of build on? Uh, of course, it's... Uh... Craig Mullins. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a he's a big. <laughs> yeah. Everyone loves Craig Mullins. Of course, I even download his uh, brass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he has a uh, Patreon too right now. Who does he? He has a Patreon. Uh, do you uh, do you also have a Patreon? I have actually, yeah. Okay. I pledge his Patreon. I'm hoping to see his PSD works and try to learn. <laughs> That's always the best way, like you know, if you like like a particular artist, look at their work, try to replicate, and try your own method, like you know. So. Yeah. 
definitely. Depending on their brushes, PSDs. Mm. That's why I love internet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I see you've uh, introduced a little color in the background. Is that like a blue or? It's a bit, uh, yeah, it's a bit blue, purplish. I just don't like working with background. I don't know why. Maybe because it can affect your value of the character as well. Yeah. Mm. I try to use any color for, at, at least it's in the middle tone, so I can make a balance like in the local color that I use. Yeah, it kind of gives you a sense of atmosphere, I guess. Yeah, true that. So I think I'll just proceed to color after this. So what I'm going to do is creating a new layer. Can you see the layer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Clipping mask that you've made? Yeah, I'm clipping so it's attached to the my base in layer. So I'm using a multiply layer here, and I'll go to 100% full brush. With of brush, I'll put the lightest color because it's in multiply layer, so it will darken everything. So just pick this. So would you like probably lean almost toward your highlight color? Sorry, what? So when, when you, you said you wanted to pick like the, the lighter tone, so is that like leaning toward like a highlight color since you're using the multiply? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So just pick the top one. <laughs> <laughs> you can change it later. Don't worry. So so once you add like the base colors, are you just gonna like do like a layer above and like start adding like just painting right on top, or will you just kind of maintain the uh, the clipping mask? Um, yeah, um, I maintain it. Uh, I will add different color later, but in the end, I have to combine every layers all together and start painting again because this is uh, just like a foundation. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty similar to what I do. Like I always just kind of build like my base, and then like I'll do like the like sort of like the uh, basic colors and stuff, and then I'll merge everything into one and start working on top of it. Mm -hmm. That that's how it how it is my my tech not really my tech <laughs> I mean what the one that I'm now. Well, like any uh any like suggestions for people who are building a portfolio now like that you would like personally get like from your experience when applying for jobs and such? Yeah, um, you can focus on your area of your ex, ex uh, area of ex, uh, what's the word expert yeah there we go <laughs> <laughs> sorry I'm um, for my English words not that good oh you do you do yeah. actually you're, you're doing quite well <laughs> we, we've had some more <laughs> difficult ones so <laughs> yours, yours is really good <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah um, and focus on one thing that you really like, and you have to uh, make sure that it's in the first page of your portfolio because that's what uh, people really people see at first. That first impression, I guess. Uh, the first impression, like they'll just open a few pages and they decide they will decide to see if uh, they want to check the other pages or not. So, so yeah, it's uh, uh, that first image must be just like absolutely crucial then I imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crucial so you have to uh, push, not really push, like show something what you are in the first few pages. Mm. Then don't show anything bad on your portfolio. If you don't like it, just don't pose it on your portfolio. 
Yeah, I guess, like, if you have, like, a lead picture, like, and it's, like, a character or something, they'll assume that, okay, like, he, he's led with this. He probably is trying to do character work for us. Or, like, if you had, like, an environment, like, right up the front, you know, like, that would probably send them, I guess, a message of what your 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 hope is for, your for like, the position and stuff, I would imagine. Right. So, I guess that would be, like, a strategic decision. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that, uh... Um... I've heard that the first piece in your portfolio that they see should be a good work, but not your best work, because, like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, the very first work they see, you know, you want to impress them, but, like, you know, and so you say, okay, they want to scroll through their, you know, a few more, but then if their best work is a little further in, then they're like, I don't know, it's... It's kind of like if you show them their best work first, then it's like you get that instant wow factor, and then the rest of the pieces don't don't add up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Actually, yeah, that that will work as well, but um, again, it depends on the the person who checks it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you could see that they like maybe you like have a build up, and it just keeps getting better. But yeah, you have to hope there. The, oh yeah. The, the, the uh, Putting some other color right now on the the same layer. I'll just put this as a layer. So I'm using a tan opacity soft brush. So I'll just paint with this red highlight high highlight red color, if you can say that. Mm -hmm. Adding some uh, blush, I guess. Yeah, it's adding some depth to your character skin. I'll paint this on the darker side, the shadow part of the skin, so it has, it will create some kind of uh, depth. That looks awesome. Uh, it gets reading so well. Yeah, you can use a lot of colors for your skin, so it will look alive. Just use a little bit of pasty and it's good to go. You can even add blue color, purple. I'll just use bluish color, different area. Then you can use full yellow for highlight. So I guess these uh, in, in sunlight then? Yeah. Gotcha. And so, is it was the uh, was the blue to kind of um, cool off the shadows a bit? Uh, can be because since it's the uh, since the background is kind of blue, you can give some blue in, on the shadow. Gotcha. Like this one. You see, it? <laughs> hmm. it's really uh, low in opacity. I don't think you can see this blue. On the neck, this one. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. And add something like that. Put a little color mixture, makes it look a little more real. It's nice. Mm -hmm. So, like, when it comes to like working for Disney. Um, if you know, like if you land at like a job like that, do you have a, uh, I don't know, like maybe eventually, do you have like your own kind of story that you would like to do with that? Um, yeah, uh, actually, I'm, I will, like, develop my own story every year for my portfolio, mm. so it can increase my creativity. And I can try a lot of different styles from that. It's really good for exercising and improving your skill. Yeah, I remember uh, when we were talking before we, we went live, you, you mentioned that, like, with your portfolio, you, you would do, like, all of it toward, like, almost like a personal project. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's really smart to me. Like, that's kind of where my mind's at. Like, you know, develop, like, actual world. So that kind of thing. I heard that they actually really appreciate personal projects, so I recommend you to do that. 
it's really a great start for a portfolio. Yeah, that's actually um, my, my strategy right now is like I'm just uh, use like I'm, I just have a personal like uh, graphic novel I'm doing and so I'm just taking all the artwork from that and using it as my portfolio uh, with a few other standalone pieces but you know kind of two birds one stone type of thing. <laughs> I see. You can just add a little bit more and it's good to go. <laughs> Yeah, that looks amazing there, like the little highlight ring and everything. Like that's so awesome. Yeah, the fact that you could get this to read so well on the navigator too is just like that's just a testament to me. <laughs> Damn. What happened to my Photoshop? Really sorry for that. I wish it could show my canvas. Uh, it looks phenomenal, like <laughs> I mean, it's fine the way it is, you know, just like doing the... Um... I think I think it's more impressive, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so I suddenly appear in Navigator. <laughs> so I think I'm done with this local color. So I'm going to this for backup, and I'll duplicate the group and the group. So this is a single layer now. So from this, I can start to repaint my vector. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I do. Instead of the group, I just um like I'll turn off the background layer, and then if you do Shift Command Option E, it'll stamp all the uh, visible layers you have. So it, like turns oh. it into one single. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, like that's 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 kind of cool to see see you do this because it's like it may, makes me feel like I'm not doing something wrong. <laughs> like I'm actually on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add some highlight. I'll use a color mode. Sorry, a color dodge brush with like ten percent opacity, maybe twelve. So just pick like the lightest oranges color here and I'll start brushing on the cheek to give the highlight so some this so it can give some depth definition that is awesome yeah I've uh, recently started playing with color dodge like I've only been using it for like magical effects but uh <laughs> I, I like how you're lighting the, uh, the the whole face with it. Like that's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's really good. I like to use it for magic as well. <laughs> yeah, like uh, whenever I'm doing like a glowing spell or something, like that's I, I just do like a color dodge layer <laughs> and then go to town. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, uh, that highlight just like set it off. Like that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. So, uh, do you uh, typically save the uh, the eyes for last? Um, not really. Sometimes I go for the eye first, but I like to maintain the general propose general proportion. Gotcha. So from here, I'll just use the normal brush again, and I'll just paint something that I think it's using, like bounce light. Maybe the eyes. Yeah, that looks that just looks fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, man. So sometimes I can use a uh, special brush well for you know um, textures and stuff. So far, I have been using a default soft and hard brush 
So right now I'm using the spatial texturing brush. So I'll just brush on the edge of actor, so it will not look this thing. I don't really like the sharp edges from the hair, so I'll just randomly brush this. Is that to kind of give it more of a uh, painterly kind of quality there? Yes, I like a uh, painter, painterly look. Yeah, me too. I always like um, artwork that has like just a little bit of like brush stroke in there, so you just get a sense of uh, the medium a bit. Yes, totally. It's like it's alive, <laughs> not really that digital. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe how quickly you've got it to this day. Like, I mean, it it looks on par with anything I've seen at Disney. Like, uh, like it's awesome. Definitely. Like, I've I've actually been like looking at some of their work because like I've been playing out for a, a character and like I've been like looking at like their concept art for Elsa and stuff. And I mean, this looks exactly like their their type of thing. Like, it's amazing. Cool. Well, he's uh, while well, he's painting, we'll talk a little bit about the the challenge real quick, like before we just turn away like the one that we wrap this week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the challenge number one is uh, finished. Um, it was the character bust rotation. So um, uh, starting today, challenge two will be up, and uh, challenge two will be um, a an environment challenge. So this this week, the prompt is to design your own forest environment. So you'll have until uh, this coming Saturday at 11.59 to uh, submit your entry. And, uh, yeah, and so um, if you're participating um, and uh, you're, you're one of the ones that, that really hit the mark, you'll be raffled. And um, next time we have an art talk interview like this, uh, your work will, will be featured and we'll uh, try to see if uh, we can get um, our, our guests to uh, critique or do a paint over and give you some pointers, so you know, a little incentive. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have a broadcast up soon, going over the results of uh, the first weekly challenge. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, so participate in challenge two. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Oh, and uh, participate in the daily challenges too. <laughs> Though there'll be one posted every day at. Uh, um, Around midnight. That's and in the time zone is uh, U.S. Uh, and Canada Eastern time. Definitely. Actually, really can't stress the uh, the daily challenges enough because they're like a lot of simple exercises. A lot of people like look over like when they're studying. Like they'll they'll do them at first, but then you know they'll eventually like forget and not go back to them. So you know like. For those of you who are just trying to improve, you know, it's just 30 minutes out of your day. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, just something to get your mind out of uh, what it does normally, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, Yeah, like having that, like, has really actually helped my gesture drawing work. I wasn't doing enough of it, but now that I kind of have to with the challenge, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's improving. <laughs> And I mean, I see some of you guys, like in the, uh, some of you guys in the group are talking about, like, you know, wanting to improve and stuff, but aren't doing them. So, you know, the key is just get off your asses and quit being lazy. <laughs> Try to put your best foot forward, yeah. Let's see. So, uh, David, are you uh, adding any uh, bounce lighting or rim lighting to uh, to this now? Or? Um, I'm adding some details on this character. Gotcha. That's looking really good, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I thought that was like really clever what you did with the uh, the Final Fantasy characters in this style. Like, is there any other like characters that you may uh, may attempt in the future for that? Because like, obviously those Final Fantasy ones got you kind of got you a little bit of attention there. Yeah, yeah it was a good PR. So. <laughs> I'm 
actually going to doodle some more of the Final Fantasy stuff in the future. Have you uh, have you done Renoa yet? From eight. Oh, have you uh, have you done yeah. uh, Renoa from eight? I wasn't yeah, sure. I've only seen like the seven ones. It is twelve from eight, but <laughs> on the twelve from eight. Ah, okay, you you got to do Renoa for me. That's my favorite character, so <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, she was like when I was a kid, like that was like my, I would play that game, and like that was my like my my Final Fantasy crush, I guess. Like I loved her, so you got you got to paint her for me. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I wanted to draw her too. You should try, uh, um, even though it's like kind of a Disney property, you should try Sora as well from uh, Kingdom Hearts. Oh yeah, actually, some some people suggest me to, to draw that. To draw that. Yeah, people, I think people love Sora. <laughs> Sora's legit, man. Yeah, I was always mind blown. Like I liked him, but like I was like, people really like him. <laughs> like, that's always like blew my mind. <laughs> He's overrated. Yeah, like that's how I always felt. Like I was like, "Good God, man!" Like I mean, he's he's a cool design and everything, but he's not like mind blowing. But they, I mean, like the the, the fan base around him is just so. I mean, they just absolutely love him. <laughs> you'll you'll probably get some attention if you do him for sure. Yeah, Zipper is a must. Yeah, like, like I don't know. Most of the time, the like, design and being like the initial attention, like you know, I think people are really just kind of cling to his story and like you know, like what he what he is and such like that. He's a, he's like he's like the he's like the badass, but at the same time he's kind of like super innocent, and everybody clings to that Goku esque uh, protagonist, you know. Where yeah, kind of like underdog, you know, just regular kind of kid, you know, but then put in an extraordinary situation type of deal, yeah. <laughs> See, uh, David, what are you doing now? I'm making a detail for the hairs. Do you ever use any like texture brushes for things like that, or most of the time do you just like treat it as a mass and just kind of wing it? Um, I like to use a normal brush for this hair because it's it has some kind of freedom for me. Oh yeah, I like to create a new layer for the hair details as well, like really small like this. It's can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually surprised that we can pick up all the little strands on the navigator. Like, I'm, I'm really glad that that's uh, coming through. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. But you can't see the brush, right? <laughs> well, we, we can actually see the brush, like, over the blank canvas. We just can't see it like in real time. Like we, all, what we see is the uh, on the navigator, like the, the stuff just appears. But we can see your your cursor uh, going going on the uh, the blank canvas. So <laughs> it's there. <laughs> can you see my liquify tool right now? No, I can't. Uh, no, nah, they uh, like I, I know of CS6. Like whenever I go into liquify, if I'm on Photoshop, like it doesn't show up. It's only if I'm on desktop that you can see it. So. It, it won't show up for us, I don't think. I see. That's too bad. Um, I like to use Goofy to change a lot of things. Yeah. Liquify is actually like a, a good friend of mine as well. Like It uh, saves me a lot of time <laughs> rebuilding things. <laughs> yes, totally. It's like your latest Liquify. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like if I like, I'll, I'll look at my piece and be like, I just need that eye to be a little bit to the side here, and uh, I don't really want to erase it and repaint it. I mean, I could, but you know, what's the point? I could just scoot it over a centimeter, you know, with the liquify tool. Yes. That is actually like really impressive how quickly you got that to read. Yeah, I love the shadow he added like uh, on the bridge of the nose there. Like it just like I mean 
It, it looks amazing. Like, it looks like you could just like wrap your head, like hand around it. It's so like it reads so well. Did you ever do a lot of studies from like uh, photos or anything, David? Or did you? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of study from photos. Like, usually it's portrait and for gestures. Hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I, mean, I assumed you had, but like, I don't know, everybody seems to have so many different methods. Like, I bumped into one guy who, like, said he never, like, you know, would study from photos, but he just, like, had rendered so many times that, I don't know, I was just like, well, you're crazy. <laughs> Like a little uh, dip you added to the uh, the hair up there. That that was with the liquify tool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I know it kind of varies with each employer, but like when you make a portfolio for say someone like Disney and you send it to them, uh, and you know typically a portfolio here is like anywhere between like six to twelve pieces maximum, and what do you usually like? I don't, I don't know. Like, what what uh, what would you recommend like for like something like that in terms of like you know what you what you put in it like you know what uh, what, oh the the content of the portfolio basically like you know what uh, what typically do you go for? Uh, since I'm applying for a visual development, so it's like so I have my own personal project. So mostly it's about that project. So it's like paintings, characters, stuff like that. Well, I mean, is it mostly like illustrative or do you try doing any like spreadsheets just to show them that you like, you know, really flesh out your concepts or? Oh, uh, you, you could do that, but uh, for me, I'll just painting because that's my, um, oh. I um, want to want them to know that I'm good at. So most it's like painting, colors, um, color scripts, something like that. So mostly like a uh, more like polished uh, like uh, painting illustrations for you then. Um, something like not really this, but it's more like sketchy lines, something like. Really conceptual looks. They gotta kind of show like your uh, production sense, I guess. Yeah, something like that. Something that uh, you think that this is uh, you can see from an art book of something like that. Gotcha. Something that. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I always thought about is like maybe having some stuff along those lines just to kind of show that you can work within sort of a a regimented pipeline because you know they they those bigger companies all kind of have like a uh, a development pipeline that those studios undergo so like if you can show show something of that nature like probably do well yeah, one one piece that I always thought would be a good idea if you're going to be like a character concept artist was like to take like one character and do like six variations of that character oh yeah oh. that's cool <laughs> never heard, I've never done before yeah, I don't know. I felt like a. I know that like you know, particularly an art director, like when you know he's trying to get like his exact vision like translated, and you know you have to do like several variations, you know, in order to really like figure out what is the appropriate balance between silhouette and function in their own idea, and the. I don't know. That that was one idea I always thought would be good, but like I wasn't a hundred percent certain. Actually, it's good. <laughs> it's something like. A prop design or a custom design, right? So it's like it's part of the concept thing, actually. Mm. It shows it's for it shows that you can do it. Yeah, that would that would probably like be really good, um, make you look good for like a, a game studio or something that has like a a good like development like concept art pipeline within their studio for kind of generating their ideas. Probably probably read well to them. Definitely.
So are you still working on the uh, the highlights for some of the hair and such? Or? Uh, no, actually I'm adding some uh, shadow depth. depth. Sometimes it's just kind of hard to follow because we're watching like the navigator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like shadows and stuff to appear magically. <laughs> this is all magic, everybody. This is yeah, like, it's it's kind of like I see his cursor moving on the side, but then like you just watching the navigator and stuff is just appearing. Like she's just like she's becoming 3D. Like she's just manifesting herself. <laughs> yeah. You actually can see my cursor. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the 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 canvas is like just gray for us. Like it's it's blank gray, but we can see your cursor stroking over top of it. And then, like, we see the navigator next to it, and that's where all the stuff is appearing. So it's just, like, it just pops on there. <laughs> just like a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Supernaturally. <laughs> so. I think I'm almost done with this. Okay. Yeah, it looks finished to me. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, whenever you finish, like, try to like expand the navigator, I guess, to, as far as you can, and see if we can get oh, like. Yeah. A... Or maybe I'll just cut this, just crop this, so it will be bigger. Damn. <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Have... That is, yeah. I've done this at the first place. Yeah, now I can see a lot of details. <laughs> it was really awesome. This is up with the eyelashes and everything. We even put like a little material texture to like the sweater or whatever she's wearing. It's really awesome. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's just a smudging tool, so we just um, brush it up using a smudge tool. Yeah, this is like I mean, you took this to like a like a nice polish stage, like, yeah. you, usually we don't get to see it, like, get to such a later stage in these demos, but man, like, you really knocked this out of the park, like, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking your process, too, like, I'm going to have to, I've been, ta I've been taking my notes, so. <laughs> <laughs> So, David, is there any, uh, I don't know, like art advice that you would give other people who are you know, working hard, trying to, you know, start working freelance and such? Like, I don't know, like, your, give you, like, your big, like, you know, coup de grace moment. Um, yeah, actually, um, I have some advice for new artists, maybe. Um, just don't work for exposure. You are more than exposure. <laughs> Sometimes, like, you know, um, I start from really small as well. So I have some kind of work for exposure thingy going on last time. So, yeah, it's not really great. I don't really recommend it. So if you want to get exposure, you just do whatever you like and post it online. Everyone can see that. Yeah, if you do what you love, I always feel like it'll it'll kind of take care of itself because you'll be genuinely passionate about it and you'll put kind of everything you have into it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, basically, if you do something for like exposure, make sure that you genuinely love it. You know, too. Don't like, just do it because you think other people will will like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or or maybe it's for some charity. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot like how you did the uh, the Final Fantasies. Like I'm, I'm not sure if you did that for exposure or not, but like the fact that you did them, like that they're a pop culture item, but you obviously really enjoy them, and you did it with your own style. And look, it you know popped on Kotaku, you know. So it was a. Uh, kind of like yeah. Um, actually, it's for fun, fun drawing, and can be for exposure too, but. I work it freely with my own uh, free time, so I mean, I don't work for other people just for exposure. 
Um, wait, <laughs> it's a bit complicated to say it in English. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, if someone offer you a job and they just want to pay you with exposure, then you shouldn't do that because um, it's not the good attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you want to do some fun personal project exposure, it's fine, but just don't do it for other people's. Uh, for other people's, it's, what do I say? Basically, do it for because you love it. I, I would guess, like, do it for yourself almost. Yeah, something like that. It's so hard. To yeah, I think that's <laughs> really good advice. A lot of people, I think, lose themselves. You know, trying to monetize this. You know, just trying to turn it into a career, and they kind of lose what was special about it, you know, and what they, and why why they wanted to kind of get into it in the first place. And it's it's always kind of like a tragedy, I think, when that happens. Yeah. Art is just expressive. Like, no matter what you're doing, be it singing or, you know, playing an instrument or painting, like, art is just an expressive medium just in itself. And when you're doing art, I think, like, I think that... You know, as a very profound advice, like what you were saying, is that anything you do, like you should always come first. If you're working for an industry job, make sure that you have that industry job is just a small part in a bigger plan that you have for yourself. Don't just work for an industry job just because Explosion. you want that job. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's what you were trying to say. I mean, I don't know. I tried to translate a little. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> so, I'm just correcting now. Yeah, I think this is this will be probably the first one we've had taken to a whole finish. Like this is pretty awesome. Yeah, and we we had technical difficulties too, and it still got it. <laughs> like that's amazing. Really, that's amazing to hear that. <laughs> Yeah, usually, like, uh, we get to, like, the, the latter stage, but then, like, you know, like, we'll have been on for, like, two hours, so then, you know, they got to go. But, like, this this looks awesome. Like, this is awesome. Actually, <laughs> I got to go after this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. You know, we, we really appreciate you coming on here and just, like, you know, taking your time out to do the demo for us and answer a few questions. It's been, a, been great being able to hang out. Yeah, I've, uh, I've really learned a lot, and it's, it's kind of reinforced my process a bit. Like we like with the way you, that you do your layers and stuff. Like it's similar to how I do it, but like you do a lot of interesting things with uh, the the uh, color modes and stuff that I I'd never thought of. So definitely gonna do, practice that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's always my favorite aspect of these uh, these kind of sessions. Like just learning all the little tricks that, you know, you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Like, everybody's had their own problem-solving process and have learned their own tricks, and so if you can get a ton of different tricks from a ton of different people, then, you know, you can really refine your process and, you know, learn all these little things that you can do. Like, uh, th this has been excellent. Yeah, exactly. So you added a little uh, fur, fur texture down there for the uh, collar? Yeah, this is for like the finishing touch. I like to make it like a painterly look. So I'm, yeah. using, I'm using a um, texture brush. Gotcha. You see my brush? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the, yeah, I can see the cursor. Like, uh, it looks really cool. So, so, far, so far, I'm using like. 70% of this painting using the default brush, so yeah, everyone can do this. <laughs> so don't depend too much on the brush. I'd say that was an effective use of the brush. It has like a kind of makes the sweater look in, like just like the attention of the edges right there makes it look instantly pop. It's like a 
kind of like a fur texture, even though you didn't do too much to the actual like neck area. The edges around it look it looks look like, like a material. Yeah, it's like you can see some kind of things, even though it's not that uh, detailed. Yeah, it's interesting to see like uh, like most people have like a like a painter brush that they kind of use to to like throughout, but like you actually kind of save yours for the ending touches. And it's a uh, it's interesting to me. Never never seen that before. Like it seems to work really awesomely though. Like I really like it. Yep, I think I'm done with this painting. Yeah, it looks it looks phenomenal. Like uh, yeah, awesome. I don't know, if you want, you can try to expand the navigator. Maybe we can full screen it a bit. See if we can get it yeah. bigger. <laughs> Let me try. Not sure how big they let it go, but worth a shot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it looks awesome, man. Really nice. Cool. I can save this JPEG and. Maybe you can. You want to check the PSD? I can give it. Yeah, that'd be phenomenal. Yeah, uh, if you you can drop a PSDs, I think, in uh, the Facebook chat. I'm pretty sure. So maybe just drop it to Travis or. Yeah, David, just drop it in the uh, the interview chat you have with me and Valmer, and we'll uh I'll, I'll drop it to Cole. Cool. Well, guys, I guess uh, I guess we're about to wrap it. Uh, you know, David. Thanks so much again for coming on here and you know just taking your time out to kind of show us your process. And Thank you for having me as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been amazing, and uh, I'll I'll be looking for that Renault piece, so uh, I'll be keeping my eye out for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks again, David, and uh, we'll we'll see you guys next time. All right, see you later. later.